Howdy and welcome back to the shop. Today, that boy right there is going to take the transmission out of this here rig. Now this is a standard S10. This is a 2000 model Blazer. Uh, this is the uh, not full-time four-wheel drive. This is the manual electric four-wheel drive with a 4L60E transmission. And I've been wanting to make a how to take a transmission out of one of these videos for quite some time. But it's hard to film anything like that since, you know, you got a body in your way. But since we've got the entire body stripped off of this chassis, we're going to make some videos without everything in the way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get up underneath of here, where the helper boy is, and we're going to take off the front Y pipes. So, here we go. So this flange right here, this isn't on all models. Now, this particular flange on this particular truck, I put that flange in there. Uh, when I got this rig, somebody had... I didn't put this transmission in it. I bought it about half done. That transmission was in it when I bought it. And they had sawzalled the Y pipe off of the the catalytic converter pipe. So I had a gasket, a uh, tri-corner gasket, and I cut some flanges and I welded them on the pipes. So this is standard. It was on my 96. Both my 96 and my 97 had this flange but not this 2000. So your results may vary. Okay, so it, somewhere along the line, the front drive shaft got pulled out of this thing. Yeah, get on that bottom one. Thank you. You gotta have a wobble knocker socket come up through here. You got it? Okay, disregard. So you gotta have a wobble knocker socket to reach them, and he's gonna take the flange bolts loose now, you should really expect to twist these off. These are not a lot of fun. Uh, I wouldn't even try these unless I had a cutting torch handy to where I could heat the nuts up. Because uh, usually these studs are rusted almost in two, and as soon as you put a socket on them, they're going to twist off. So that's just something to know. Now, I've had this rig apart uh, a couple of years ago, and you can still see the remnants of the anti-seize. I absolutely goop everything with anti-seize when I put it back together. So we're going to go ahead and take the rest of the exhausts off of this thing. Now, to pull the transmission and the transfer case and all that, you do not have to pull anything else other than the Y pipe. We're just taking this off because I need it out of my way for the next steps that we're going to do with this chassis. So, I can't believe that's coming out of there. Usually them studs twist off. They are a stainless steel stud, but for whatever reason, they still rust and they usually twist off. So, anyway, I've done busted one off and he's getting the other one apart. So, there we go. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, tran uh, the uh, transfer case loose from the cross member. And then we're going to jack her up a couple inches and we're going to stick us a, uh, a two before block underneath of the tail shaft of the transfer case. Or a two by six block or whatever that block is. We're going to stick a two by block underneath the tail shaft. Now this next step is kindly important. So you want to jack this thing up as high as you can get it. And it's going to bottom out on the body if there's a body here. And then you want to block the tail shaft up and then take out the cross member. So on these cross member bolts, it takes a the nut is, uh, takes a 5, 15 millimeter, and the head takes a 13 millimeter. The, the way these are in there, on most of them that I've seen, is the nut is on the outside 
on the frame rail over here and on the top over here. I don't think you've got room enough to put the bolt through on the top on the on the other side. So what you got to do is reach up through the bottom. Pinch roll. Reach up through the bottom with a 13 millimeter socket on an extension and then lay lay your wrench in there to catch the nut. And that's how you get them out. They are a booger bear to get them out sometimes. So at this point, if you were just going to service the transmission, you could pull your transmission jack out of there and service your transmission and be done with it. Now, you don't have to pull the cross member out to service the transmission, but I like to. It, it just makes my day go easier because if I don't pull the cross member out, chances are there's at least one hole along this line of bolts that is stripped out that I got a helicoil and then I got to pull the cross member out anyway. So since we're not pulling, since we've got to pull the starter out of this, our next step is to jack it up just a hair and yank our uh, block out of the back of it. So go ahead and jack it up, Elijah. Just a hair. There we go. All right, ease it back down. Oh, I'll try to. Ease it back down. I bent the pipe. <laughs> well, I take that back. Uh, we need to pull the starter out of here. So we're going to do the starter out of here while we got our block underneath of the uh, tail shaft. So stay tuned. Take the other one out first. Take the hard one out first. Did it come out? So anyway, we're taking the starter loose right now. And I like to take the starters out of these with the Y pipe off and, it jack and the transmission jacked up in the air just as far as I can jack it and lift it up in the air. It just gives you an extra half an inch or quarter inch to work. And I leave the cables hooked up to the starter, take the starter off of the rig, and then take the cables off. Have you got the other bolt out of it? Don't take that out of there yet. Have you got the other bolt out? Yes, it's right there. Okay, Daddy will get it. So I'm going to get the starter maneuvered out of there. <laughs> I think that one was okay, the camera's there. still rolling. So don't say no cuss words. <laughs> So you get the starter down about that far, and then you work, usually work enough slack into your wires that you can get a nut or a wrench on the back side of here. Sometimes you got to finagle the big starter lead loose, but it's a whole lot easier to take them out this way than any other way I've discovered. So on these Chevrolets of these model years, this is a 2000 model, but this engine being derived from a 350 has SAE fasteners on it. So this is a 3 8 bolt. You can see a, a, a grade 8 stamp on there, maybe even a grade 10, but that is an SAE fastener. Uh, pretty much everything that goes into this block will be SAE. Now these are metric, but these are going to be SAE. It is greatly confusing, but that's just the way that it is. Uh, another thing, if these have a shim in them, 
go back with the same shim. I've never encountered one that had a shim or needed shims, but if they have a shim here, put a shim back in it. So there's the starter out of it. So the next thing we're going to do now uh, is let her down off of the block. Like I said, while you've got it up here on the blocks, if all you're doing is service and transmission, now's a great time to do it. But Ben's, we're yanking everything out. We're going to lift her up, pull out the block, pull out our tranny jack, and then we're going to drain the fluids out of the transmission and out of the transfer case. What do I do with the bracket? Just set it in the pan. Here I got the helper boy. He's down there taking the, uh, what's Vice Grip Garage call it? The uh, auto, tr auto transmatic shift machine. <laughs> He's taking the tranny pan off of it. And now we're going to leave the bolts, the ones on either corner up here and the one in the middle back there. We're going to leave those bolts in there for now. And then when he's out of the way, we will, uh, I'll take the rest of the pan down and take a bath in burnt transmission fluid. So next time you're at a yard sale or junk sale or anything like that, if you happen to see some of these uh, buffet serving tray things, get them. Man, them are the handiest thing because they, uh, they're all the same size and you can lay one lip over on top of another lip and you don't make nearly the mess on your shop floor. So here's what the bottom of the tranny pan looks like. That's actually not too bad. It's, I mean, there's, there's clutch material in there, and there's a little bit of glitter, and there's a little bit of crud on the magnet, but, you know, it's not a glitter factory, and that's not an inch deep, you know, and it only smells like 93% fried, so I think this transmission probably got another 80,000 miles on it. We're just going to put this back up on there, put all the bolts back in it, and pretend we didn't see any of this. That's a lot of oil. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they're usually way over full. Just going to the bathroom. That's great. <laughs> yeah, man, that sucks. We're going to have to edit this video. So the helper boy is taking the caps loose on the U-joint, and we're going to pull the drive shaft out of it. Now, I do have an oil pan sitting up underneath the, the uh, tail shaft, because oftentimes when you pull the drive shaft out of one of these, you get a bath in transmission fluid. And about two gallons of transmission fluid came out of that... Uh, transfer case so as predicted about a pint of transmission fluid ran out of the tail shaft housing no big deal I've, and this is something I usually do is I'll tape up the uh, U-joint caps that way they don't fall off and get dirt down in them or lose the bearings or anything like that so we're going to stow this out of the way and then we're going to yank the start yanking the uh, tranny loose Okay, while well you got her setting down as far as it'll go, setting on tail shaft like that, you get about two and a half feet of extensions out and a wobble knocker socket. Now these are 916 headed because these are SA bolts that go into the block. So you get your socket out and your long extension and you take them 
I always take the top two bell housing bolts loose while I got it in my teeth like that. Over here, son. Like that. Just finger tight. So that bell housing bolt there holds the uh, dip, dipstick for the transmission. So take your dipstick. Sometimes you can get them pulled plumb out of the truck. Sometimes you can't. But you take that bolt out and make sure you drop it right in your left front eye. And uh, no, you didn't get it. But you take that bolt out, take the other top bolt out before you do anything else because right now is about the only time you're going to have clearance to get to those bolts. And sometimes you got to use an extra wobble knocker in there in the middle, but it can be done with the cab on. So way up inside of there, if you can look and see, I've got a flashlight shining kind of in the center of the camera there on the torque converter bolts. And you roll her over, it takes a 5.8 socket here on the crankshaft, but there's a little dust shield underneath of the starter. You pull that dust shield off, roll the engine over gently, and you can get to the torque converter bolts through the starter hole. So we're going to unbolt the torque converter bolts, and uh, then we'll be ready to start taking other stuff apart. Okay, so that's done. We got all three torque converter bolts pulled out of it. It's amazing that three little old bolts are all it takes to transmit those uh, probably dozens and dozens of horsepower out of the Mighty 4.3 into the Mighty 4L60E. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts loose here from the uh, intermediate, I don't remember exactly what this is called, but this tail shaft adapter, we're going to take that loose from the transmission, leaving the, the motor mount or the mount on the transfer case. So we're going to get these loose. We're going to take the top two or three out, and we're going to leave the bottom ones in, at least the corners and get this back up on the tranny jack and uh, once it's up on the tranny jack then I'll lower this down out of the way and then we'll be ready to uh, scoot the tranny out of it. Now I don't have a transmission jack adapter that fits these I just basically have always crawled up underneath of them left them laying on the cross member on the back and just let them kind of come down and hit me in the teeth. I don't know of a better way of doing it they're heavy, probably over 100 pounds, but that's the way I've always done them. And I ain't killed myself yet. And still got all my teeth. How much of me was in that shot? So we've got her picked up on the jacks, on the tranny jack. Um, I guess before I take that loose, I probably better take these uh, cooler lines out. Okay, so these cooler lines aren't too bad. You just got to get something pokey in there and peel them up out of the up out of the groove. And those are just a little W-shaped clip. Once you get the clips out of it, you just kind of got to wiggle and hold your mouth right, and then we'll pop right out of the hole, just like into that, and they're going to bleed all over the place. That's just what they're supposed to do. So, we got that loose. I've got all the plugs unhooked from this. I've got the vacuum lines thrown out of the way. So we're ready to take this uh, transfer case out. Now, like I said, I typically do this from underneath. I take out all my bolts but two. I have a good cup of coffee and go pee and do everything like that. And then I get up underneath of here, take them two bolts out, and you just kind of pull her back. 
just pull her back and it'll disengage from the uh, transmission to the transfer case will disengage a little bit and then it'll be loose and then it's yours to deal with and it's pretty heavy but I'm not going to do it from underneath this time because I'm old and smarter than I've always ever been before or at least I'm older than I've ever been before I'll get that. Get back. This rascal comes flying out of there. I don't want you squished in the middle of it. That's so much easier. Uh, and you can see there's still a lot of oil up down inside of there. That's just how it is. Man, that's a lot lighter when that's not standing on your head. Ooh, it peed all over me. <laughs> all right, so we've got everything turned loose. We've got the transfer case out of it. That came pretty easy. Uh, didn't take too much of a bath in tranny fluid. We've got the top two bolts out of our transfer case all, or our transmission bell housing already. Torque converter's unbolted. Everything is ready to come out. We lack the bolts around the side and the bottom. So we're going to start on them, get them out of the way. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for, Elijah. Yay. Oh, curb your enthusiasm, son. Huzzah! There you go. Japanesey. Yeah, torque converter still stuck in the thing. I believe we can let her down. I'm out of the way. Okay, you got your Mark One eyeballs tuned in? Yep. Alright. Nothing's broken yet, or nothing's got hang up yet. No injuries. No injuries reported. So, I was wondering if I could pick it up, huh? Yep. Yep. I don't want to, but I can.
Well, we got us a boy now where a transmission used to be. I guess transmission or a boy, either one, you can still go down the road. <laughs> so, give us a big fat thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. I enjoyed working with you today. How'd you do? Good. Nobody got hurt. Still got every, all ten fingers, all ten toes, <laughs> most of my teeth. I don't even have any more gray hairs. Did you have fun? I did too. I like bending wrenches with you. So, y'all get out in the shop, take your boys, get out in the shop, take something apart. You know, even if you don't know what you're doing, take it apart anyway. In the meanwhile... Y'all drive safe, watch for deer. That's right. Y'all drive safe, watch for deer, take care of your children. <laughs>